welcome to Face to Face. And uh, today we're going to talk about writing, we're going to talk about creative writing, we're going to talk about books. I'm with MP, welcome to Face to Face. Uh, thanks for having me. So you brought your books with you? I did, yeah. I brought uh, two uh, anthologies that my work appears in. Um, they both uh, are published by New Lit Salon Press, which okay. is a, uh, a small web-based web uh, press that uh, was started a few years ago by a friend of mine named Brian Centrone and uh, another uh, a designer uh, named uh, Jordan Scroggins. Um, and uh, their, their whole mission really is to, to give a, a venue for new writers who haven't really published much work recent, uh, in, in their past or um, have published but they aren't, they aren't well known or anything okay. like that and to uh, kind of showcase the diversity of talents that they have within different uh, genres. So but when you say online, I mean, you have the book have been published. So yes, it's, it's yeah, so, so. yeah, it is, it, yeah, it's, it's, it's web based, but yeah, we, we do okay. have uh, actual physical copies. Uh -huh. So the print is not completely uh, dead. Okay. Um, Good. Yeah. So uh, the most recent one um, is First Came Fear. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a collection of horror stories that was published in October, uh, edited by uh, Casey Ellis, who also edited. Um, the previous collection, Startling Sci-Fi. Okay. Um, and the idea was to show a little bit of a different side to uh, to genre fiction, horror fiction specifically, uh, right in time for uh, Halloween, which unfortunately is past mm -hmm. now. But um, and uh, yeah, kind of give people a different sense of of how horror fiction can really be and how genre fiction can be presented in a in a creative experimental sometimes but also just a, a, a quality way because a lot of times I think people look at genre fiction as, as kind of a lesser uh, form Liberal. Of, yeah. of, mm -hmm. of art than uh -huh. like literary fiction but really I mean if you if you go back to like the romantic poets and and uh, gothic fiction that uh, that was around in the early 19th century um, books like Frankenstein by Mary Shelley uh, were kind of really uh, the both yeah. horror and sci-fi and gothic fiction all at the same time well, very, yeah. uh, and it's considered this classic story but mm -hmm. it, at the time it was it was kind of this this pop kind of novel uh -huh. uh, that had come out and um, there was actually a recent exhibition about the 200th anniversary of uh, of Frankenstein oh, um, and just the kind of the impact that that piece uh, that one novel has had on the world of, of fiction uh -huh. and the oh, creation also, of genres yeah, yeah, yeah. and everything like that. Uh -huh. um, so kind of going from that um, standpoint, like the, the enduring qualities of, of genres and, and what they say about us and what you can say about human beings in general uh, through these, what are considered sometimes lesser forms of, of literature. But does the expand uh, the or um, how can I say, um, fictions go uh, expanding or it's uh, shrinking, like, I don't know, in a movie, like, uh, they go where I see less horror movies than, than 10 years ago, 20 years ago. So the, in Yeah, writing? I mean, it, and that's, that's a thing that's, uh, I mean, you see a lot of different types of horror fiction uh, mm -hmm. coming out. Uh, there was the uh, kind of like the paranormal romance thing or like the, the Twilight novels and, and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of, that, that wave's crested, I think. But uh, what you're seeing with, with horror movies and, and things of that nature, there it's, it's getting a little bit more interesting in like the psychological aspects of it. Like oh, the most recent, uh -huh. um, horror movie that I absolutely loved was uh, Hereditary that uh -huh. came out uh, this year. Um, and it's, it's, it's not so much about the horror itself, the supernatural qualities are there, but I think what's most compelling is the, 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 the psychological yeah. aspects because it's really about yeah. the disintegration of this yeah. family. Yeah, yeah. Horror, horrifying things have yeah. happened to yeah. these people mm -hmm. and, and you're kind of watching their relationships break down mm -hmm. just as much as you're seeing these supernatural elements taking hold mm -hmm, of them. Mm -hmm. So I think that, that that is something that, and that, that's, that's a tradition that goes back, um, you see with like um, the film Rosemary's Baby from the, from the 1960s. Like mm -hmm. it's, there's the supernatural elements and the, the, the child of Satan and all this stuff, but really you're seeing the, the anxieties of, of a young mother who's, 
who's dealing with societal pressures and not sure who she can trust and who she can turn to for advice and help. And so that ends up being kind of the more compelling drama. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think what you see with, with horror and with sci-fi and this kind of thing, you've gotten over the the idea of people being like, oh, well, what is a horror movie? Like when you had the first, like, the first Frankenstein uh, adaptation in the 1930s, you have Boris Karloff in all the heavy makeup and he's just kind of like walking around like, like that. Like a robot. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it, it, it doesn't, it totally doesn't have, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it, it, it's, it's not, it, mm -hmm. it's not anything like the, the actual creature in the, in mm -hmm. the novel mm -hmm. where it's trying to figure out what it means to be something that was dead and mm -hmm. has been now imbued with life mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and confronting its creator, which is something that humans obviously don't have the, the opportunity to do. That's it. So, uh, yeah, and, <laughs> and so, like, uh, so once you've gotten past like, the introduction uh -huh. of these, these styles of, of looking at things, these, these types of stories to tell, you can see like, a, a sort of expansion of the, the creativity that you can use with it. Whether or not that's the, the more popular way of, of doing things, I mean, that's, that's, you know, what the market will bear, I guess, but... Uh, no, but, I mean, you'll always have some kind of social parallel between... Exactly, but, but, yeah. You know, and now everything become more psychological than... than right. Than, uh, uh, how can I say, uh, physical or, or... Right, and I mean, there is, there is always going to be a market, I think, for the, the slasher movies and, and the kind of things that, you know, like the, there was a big... Uh, uh, there's a big thing of like 3D movies uh, w with like tons of gore and blood splattering at you and I'm like sure. that, that th it goes in cycles yeah. and you, you see yeah. those. I think they, they did another Halloween well, the, the movie, cool, uh, cool you know. Movies. No, so. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, they did, yeah, they did a, another Halloween movie th this year that's, you know, 40 years after the original one and they remake Friday the 13th, mm -hmm. they, they, you know, so uh, uh, there is always going to be a market for that because people like the the jump scares and the you know just kind but of the on excitement writing, of it. Don't, does on uh, the writing aspect does it goes more psycho become more well yeah and I think I, one of the most uh, one of the best uh, recent uh, horror books that I I read um, was uh, I believe it came out a couple years ago was um, Carmen Maria, uh, Carmen Maria Machado's uh, Her Body and Other Parties which uh, is very much a psychological horror collection of, uh -huh. of short stories mm -hmm. um, and a lot of it coming at things from a, a, a female, uh, mostly it is a female perspective mm -hmm. um, and kind of the horrific experience the, the, of, the, me too, the, the yeah me too exactly it's, no, it's the horrific experiences that you have just of being a woman, a, a woman in yeah. society yeah. and it's it's very eye-opening to to read it especially wow. you know being a, a white cisgendered uh -huh. man uh -huh. of it just like I didn't. I, these are things that I don't even yeah, normally think yeah, about, yeah. and and just to see it put that way in the context of a kind of surreal psychological horror um, is it's wow. it's really it's really amazing. Yeah, powerful. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and you know there's there are some supernatural elements to it, but in a way you can kind of tell that they're they're really more for a metaphorical uh -huh. uh, purpose to underline the the deeper the thing that the she's yeah. yeah and and. Really, the, the, the horror is yeah, the amazing. is what's actually yeah. happening in yeah. real life. So. Yeah, and, and sometimes I mean that's a comment people make. You say, you know, the, sometimes the writing it's less than the reality you can find in some places or in some situations. Yeah, exactly. Like, because it, it, over it's yeah, much. I mean it's it's like the it, some I saw somebody say uh, that satire is dead in our yeah. current political climate, and yeah. they might be right about yeah. that. It's it, the, sometimes the 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 truth really is more horrific or yeah. stranger than, yeah, than yeah. fiction. So. How did you end up on writing? How did you, what, what, where um, does that come from? I, that's, that's, a, that's a good question. I don't really, it's, it, because it's, it's been so long. I mean, I've, uh, I've been writing for basically my entire life and, and I think that it, what it goes back to is um, when I was a when I was a child, like mm -hmm. you know, I, I I used to pose this question to people sometimes of like, like whenever I'm asked this, uh, like what did you do if it was a rainy day or a snowy day outside and you could only really like play in your room, uh, or inside of your house, like what did you do? Mm -hmm. And 
you know, I've always had heard people's different answers on that. And for me, it was I would just, you know, get like all, all of these different toys out and I would, I would, you know, make these entire worlds and have these strange stories and these characters doing bizarre and amazing things all the time. And I think a lot of children do that like kind of dramatic mm -hmm. play mm -hmm. um, experience. And learning about this uh, actually a lot more in depth my, my wife being a preschool teacher of uh, mm -hmm. just oh, yeah, from she, from her she, from her understanding she, she she's, she's like yeah this is this is all that, this is that's basically it you mm -hmm. just she's like yeah i know that like certain kids in my class are going to be playwrights mm -hmm. you know because the of the way that they speak exactly. and the way that they they talk about things so i started from a very young age mm -hmm. kind of experimenting with narrative and stories mm -hmm. and replaying things that i'd seen in movies or or read in in books and kind of creating my own way of, of telling stories and learning how to do that. And as I got older, it, it's tur it turned more into, you know, like thinking about things that I see in the news or in the world in general or just from my own life and, and how to translate that into an ex a way to make other people experience that. And just from my own love of reading and writing, I, I started to develop my own stories and my own uh, my own novels over a course of time um, you know I wrote my first novel when I was in high school and it was wow. it was it was it was terrible um, and it will never see the light of day uh, but it, you know it was it was a decent length uh -huh. novel and it was uh -huh. it was something and it was actually kind of in a in a gothic horror sci-fi tradition so uh -huh. it was a, there was a lot going on and, it, and it's a total mess and it doesn't even really make sense and there's a lot of grammar mistakes but I was 16 so what I, you know I, I can't really sure. so I can't really ask much more of myself but it, you know going through college and, and learning more and reading more and uh, kind of figuring out what my my voice is as a as a writer over the years uh, has uh, it's it's just a, a lifelong process, mm -hmm. I think, for me, and I don't. It's it's more of a way of being than it is to than it is to say like this is something that I do. It's mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. just intrinsic to to who I am, and whether it's looking at something as a as you know uh, like with the story that that was published in this. You, um, want, you want to read one? Yeah, I can read a little bit of. Sure. Uh, yeah, this is from uh, the yeah from the uh, first came fear uh, collection. Uh, it's dressage for beginners. Um, is my story that's included in it. And I'll just um, get a little bit of this. And so the, the context of the story is a, um, uh, a bunch of old veterans from a uh, British cavalry regiment uh, having a, uh, a bit of uh, cigars and brandy and, and talking about uh, uh, life and, and things that have happened to them. This mm -hmm. is the, the old colonel mm -hmm. uh, reminiscing about his, his, uh, his days. Uh, well, well, where to begin? I suppose back at the beginning, when I was but a young man, just 22 and full of ambition and vigor, it was, it was 1854 and I'd just received my commission as a lieutenant in the 5th uh, the fifth Dragoons, just before we set off to fight the Russians, of all things. Help the Turks take the Crimea, who even remembers why. It didn't matter much to me, of course. I just wanted to leave England, see the world, see the fear and respect one could command, standing tall in bright imperial reds. Oh, we were all fools in those days. Of course, you must know about Balaclava, the thin red line and the charge of the light brigade and all that. Even in defeat, we tend to make a grand tableau of it all. All I saw was death, smoke, and misery, broken bodies of men trodden under hoof, whole squadrons blasted to bits by the roar of the howitzers. Tennyson never rode of the way a horse's legs twitch while the blood spurts out from the stump where its head was lately perched. Oh yes, the whole damn bla battle was a bloody melee even before the charge of the Light Brigade. The Russians ran headlong at the 93rd and were cut to pieces. Then we were sent to counterattack. Somehow in the smoke and fog I was separated from my platoon. And then my horse was shot out from under me by a mortar blast, sent me flying ten yards through the air. By the time I came to it was dusk. The valley was a desolate waste littered with the hideous mangled bodies of shattered men and blo the bloated hulks of the dead horses. All of my kit was still attached to my horse. A beautiful chestnut colt he was, bred right here in Yorkshire by yours truly. I'd, brought him as a f I'd bought him as a foal from an Italian chap and trained him myself. It broke my heart to search amongst the carnage for poor Vincenzo. That was the name the Italian stable man had given him. But I didn't know what else to do, standing alone and hurt in that horrid, smoky twilight. There I was, half mad with thirst and desperation, when ahead of me the smoke parted, 
parted like a curtain to reveal the silhouette of a great majestic horse, standing still, its head bowed to the ground. At first I thought me, I must be hallucinating, but no, it was him, Vincenzo, somehow revived, though with blood streaming down his chest, which was torn through to the muscle and sinew from the mortar blast. And then I saw, to my utter bafflement and horror, that Vincenzo was eating the corpse of a fallen Russian soldier. Oh. So, uh, it's a little intense. Um, yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a little light reading. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you, yeah. That was actually why I was gonna ask you to, to, to make sure that the, that the thing I was going to read for you was uh, okay for the viewership, but I, uh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, if you have any no, reactions I, or questions to that. <laughs> no. um. no, actually, but what, what's next for you? Uh, what's next for me, uh, I'm actually working on a uh, collection of short stories, okay. uh, including some of the pieces that have been published by uh, New at Salon Press um, and some other things that I've collected over the years. Um, so I'm working on uh, getting that together and um, hopefully, fingers crossed, we can, me and um, the people at New at Salon Press can uh, work on getting that, uh, no. that out there. No. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, you know, I'll... Still kind of up in the air. The, the manuscript isn't finished yet. So. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So you so. still have a lot of work to do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So there's a lot of things left to be done. Thank so. you so much for All coming. Right. Hey, thank, thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you. All right. You're thanks. Welcome. Thank you so much for coming. And that was uh, face to face. And please keep uh, watching your news on Presenza.com. And hope to uh, see you very soon. Thank you.